Come on, Davies. Thank you very much for coming to WPC TV. You are good to be here. You are a, a very distinguished former Minister of Economic Affairs in Turkey, and now a very distinguished head of uh, global economic governance at the Brookings Institution in Washington DC. So when you look at the world economy, you obviously have lots of ideas. And it seems to me on the last session at the conference, the big issue really was inequality. What is your recipe? First of all, do you think that inequality is actually has reached a dangerous point? I think inequality has increased tremendously within countries. Uh, not everywhere, but in large parts of the world, particularly in the U.S. And of course, the U.S. is very important in terms of its overall position. Um, I mean, the dramatic statistic which kind of tells the story very dramatically is that 94% of the post-crisis, post-economic crisis gains, income gains in the U.S., 94% of everything went to 1% at the top. It kind of says it all. Now, it's not, it's not everywhere the same, but I think there are forces of technology, of globalization, of pressures from the financial sector. All these things move in the same direction and move the income distribution in the same direction. Now, different people have different value judgments on it. I think um, a certain degree of inequality comes with competition and markets, yeah. obviously. The question is, has it gone way beyond that? And I think it has. Mobility is also linked to that. You, you might say, well, we can be unequal, but as long as we're, made, we're immobile, everybody has the same chance. That's okay. Well, it's not the case. And then there's another angle to this, and that is if, there, if there's no large growth middle class demand, then firms don't invest because they don't see the future demand for their products. So we get into a vicious kind of cycle where profits accumulate but investment isn't very strong, jobs are not created, the fact that jobs aren't created, unemployment is high, puts downward pressure on wages, but the fact that downward pressure on wages creates lack of demand in the economy starts the whole cycle again. And what you're really implying is the end of the American dream. No social mobility well, and an over-concentration of wealth in a very, very tiny percentile of the population. But presumably it's the same also in many developing countries. I mean, Brazil, for example. Well, China, first uh, of all. China. Of course, China. But China is growing very rapidly. So, it, you know, as it was said during the panel, uh, if you grow at 7, 8, 9 percent, you can live with some of that. That's why in China, you know, the, the system needs the high growth because it is also very unequal, in a way, paradoxically, because it's still ruled by the Communist Party, you know. But it is, in fact, in terms of well, inequality. The Party. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, but the inequality is, is as, almost as bad as in the US. Um, in Brazil, the inequality is very high, but it, it's one of the few countries where, through social programs and through a, a great progress over the last 20 years or, or, or so of, in, in skills and education and so on, I mean, not enough, mm -hmm. but it has improved somewhat in Brazil, but it remains highly unequal. The same can be said for my country, Turkey. Yeah. There has been a little bit of an improvement. Mm. However, the actual starting point is extremely unequal. Yeah. So, you know, you, there's both the question of where you're at and where well, you're moving and to. You cite the case of Brazil, but in fact, I mean, you now have lots of genuinely quite worrying demonstrations in Brazil yeah. because of the upcoming World Cup, Soccer World Cup in 2014. Well, and, you know, which is. You know, when people don't have good public transport, don't have enough of the healthcare system, they see huge sums of money, even in a country like Brazil, which is, you know, soccer fan number one, yeah. of course there's a problem. But there's another side to the, you know, the, the political dynamics. As, as the middle class is actually progressing in some of the emerging market countries, like Brazil, like Turkey, like uh, India, India. Uh, despite all the difficulties, you know, there's a, a much stronger Chile. Mm -hmm. Chile is one of the most successful Latin American countries for the last 25 years, but also one where youth protest is very high. Mm -hmm. Of course, expectations are strong. Yeah. If you're very, very poor, mm -hmm. you're kind of out of the system. You don't have means. You're, you're just, you know, you're fighting yeah. for your survival. It's, it's rare that, for, that you're going to go and protest in the yeah. main squares. But if you're kind of entering the middle class, if you're aware of what's happening in the world, if you have a certain amount of education, then not only 
do you have expectations, but you can also mobilize yourself with social yeah, media. I think so that's now being called the squeezed middle by, uh, by yeah, the politicians. Right. And what's the solution? Well, I do believe the solution, it, it, there's no you know, magic no. one that you can use, but I think education, the system of education is extremely important. That it, generates a broad, and that the Nordic countries, the Scandinavian countries have been very successful in that, that it really does generate a f basically free or not too expensive education for all. Yeah. The fact that in the US now, you want to go to get a good university as an undergrad, you have to pay $50,000. And you know, there are no scholarships for that. Scholarships start at the graduate level. But as an undergrad, you have to borrow if you don't yeah. have the money yourself. And so I think the education side, is very important for mobility also. Basic health care for all is, is also extremely important. Then I think the quality of public expenditure is very important. It is true that you cannot keep increasing public expenditures and transfers. So you have to really take a hard look at yeah. the quality of what you're doing with your, with your, you need public expenditure, you need the state. You have to be pretty tough on its quality. And finally, you know, at the end of the day, we're all very worried about healthcare costs. But health, a healthy life is the most important thing we have. Absolutely. Right? I mean, if that's gone, what else? Mm -hmm. So in that sense, um, you know, we're gonna have to accept, given also the cost of technology, mm -hmm. that health costs a certain amount to get a healthy society yeah. and healthy health for ourselves. And therefore we will have to be willing to pay a certain amount for that. It's not gonna be a free thing. But at the end of the day, I think I'm willing to pay, you know, if I'm threatened with bad health, I'm willing to pay 15, 20% of my income on that. Well, I wish you very good health for a very long time. And on that I mean, note... I'm okay for now. <laughs> thank you very much, Kamal. Thanks Kamal a lot. Thank you. Thanks.